The recent assault we've seen on art from environmentalist activists are much more serious than many of us may realize, and I will explain what I mean in a second. But before I begin this commentary, my friends, I have to tell you. So, there is an organization that I want you to know about called Uncensored America. And this organization is basically a group that fights for free speech. They go across college campuses around America and they fight for free speech. They host people who have been censored by social media platforms or otherwise, and they basically give them a voice so that the people they would have been talking to if they weren't censored would have the ability to interact with them. Uh, I recently um, wor worked with this organization at Penn State um, for the unfortunately canceled Alex Stein, Gavin McInnes event called Stand Back, Stand By, which was shut down by a bunch of riotous protesters uh, outside, unfortunately. And if you guys want to know more about that there's a video on this channel talking about all of that all the details video footage all that kind of stuff but they are hosting a new event with john doyle and hunter avalone a debate at the university of tennessee knoxville on gender roles and i think again free speech is under assault in america it's been under attack for a very long time the postmodernists have devised their reasoning against free speech the woke activists have devised their reasoning it is so important that we all band together under that one principle to ensure discourse can flourish so if you guys want to check out uncensored america just go to uncensoredamerica.us i'll have all the information in the description down below now let's get into this video all right my friends I'm sure many of you have seen the various attacks on paintings around the country. In Germany, quite recently, uh, environmentalist activists from the group Last Generation threw mashed potatoes on a painting from Claude Monet uh, called Grain Stacks, which is basically just a painting of haystacks, a painting of a bunch of haystacks. And in, uh, in another museum uh, around the world, uh, Van, the Van Gogh painting, The Sunflowers, was also attacked. This was like the third or fourth iteration of that painting, which had tomato soup plastered all over it. Now, many of you may have seen these stories and you may have shaken your head and just said, well, this must be just another day for people who don't have any respect for anything, any reverence for anything but their own causes. But when I saw these stories come across my news feed, my friends, I began to weep internally. I began to weep because these activists are showing that they don't understand, nor do they appreciate, many different principles that make society possible. By attacking a painting, you are assaulting A, the principle of private property, which is the basis for any civilized society. Every man, every woman has a sense of self-ownership in, in, inherent to them since birth. And if you do not believe me, just look at human actions as human beings develop. Just look at every single culture throughout the world which has a sense of ownership or a sense of claims uh, somewhere. This has been universal to every human culture. And so this attack on paintings is an assault on private property, but it is also an attempt to mask political activism, uh, a mask obscenity rather, under the guise of political activism. My friends, political activism is simply meant to be a process by which someone advocates for their values in a public way through the political process. But obscenity, when you quite literally try to break down the norms of that very process, is not intelligible. Those things are not advocacy. But what these activists like to do, they like to make obscene things mean something intelligible. They like to make the incoherent become coherent. And when I say obscenity, I don't simply mean the stuff that offends your sensibilities, right? There are obscenity laws in America, which I think are unconstitutionally unjust uh, and also immoral, uh, which say that if you say a curse word, you are therefore violating some higher rule. No, 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 no. That's not what I mean. What I mean, I mean by obscene, I mean that which offends what is proper. And this gets me into the thesis of this video. My friends, the assault on these paintings is not just an assault on property. It's not just an assault. Uh, it's not just a mockery of political activism, dressing it up under obscenity. It's fundamentally an assault on beauty. One of my favorite philosophers, Lord Kames, Henry Home Lord Kames, he was one of the 
premier voices of the Scottish Enlightenment. For those of you who do not know, the Scottish Enlightenment was an intellectual movement in Europe which coincided with the European Enlightenment and the American Enlightenment. And a lot of the American founders, such as Thomas Jefferson, actually read the thinkers from the Scottish Enlightenment. In fact, Thomas Jefferson read Lord Kames. Benjamin Franklin actually had correspondence with Lord Kames and was marveled at Lord Kames' intelligence. So it's fair to say that what happened in the Scottish Enlightenment influenced the founding and therefore the philosophy of the United States. Well, Lord Kames says in his essays on the principles of morality uh, and religion, and natural religion, which I will, I will also have in the description down below. You should all read it. It's a brilliant essay. It's a little bit dense. It's a little bit archaic, but the principles are enduring and brilliant. He talks about cause and effect, and he talks about beauty. And Kames basically says that something is beautiful when it acts in accordance to its proper function. So for Kames, a car is beautiful when it works pop properly, when you hear that engine purring, when it drives good, when it can drive at all, when it is fulfilling its functions, it is beautiful. Now, this idea of beauty is not the uh, is not necessarily um, uh, this idea that if someone is physically attracted to you, they are beautiful. Although, the broader idea of beauty plays into what we call physical attraction. This idea of beauty is at the is beneath all of our cultural and social understandings of beauty. Beauty is when something works as it should or appears as it should, which is why you'll have scientists say that there is a biological basis to physical attraction. And part of that biological basis to physical attraction is the proportional shape of your face. If your shape is proportional, it is generally assumed, this is conventional wisdom, that that correlates to some level of physical attraction. Imagine a disproportionate face, and regardless of what your personal preferences are, you may have this sense of uh, unease, or you may have this sense of, uh, of, of, of it being out of place. Not because you're being mean, but because there are certain things, certain objects that our eyes correspond to that make us react a certain way. For example, if you were to see a deformed face that had just been splashed with acid and it has, and the eyes are missing and everything, you would probably recoil. Not because you're being mean, but because you understand what a human face must look like. Well, the idea of beauty, my friends, operates on the premise of you understanding what is proper. Now, the question may be asked, Christian, does one have to be physically attractive to be beautiful? No, because if a human being is more than their physical complexion, which we are, we are not merely flesh and blood, we are also beings of emotion, we're beings of thought, and all of these things are spiritual things insofar as they go beyond what we can immediately see, and they have to be deduced and, and given by us. So if we accept that fact, and then we also accept the idea that beauty is that which is according to its proper function, then we can understand that if you are a rationally thinking human being, you are a beautiful person because the human mind is meant to be rational. If you are a human being that observes decorum and you are civilized, then you are a beautiful person because human action is higher than animal action. It is not meant to be rough, primitive, and barbarous. It is meant to be refined, civilized, and conducive to life. If you just order yourself according to principles, you're a beautiful person person. And I believe as I talk to you and you're the sound of my voice that you are a beautiful person if you are considering these sentiments. Not because I said them, but because you're using the tools of your humanity. This, this crude matter as Yoda would say, has nothing to do with how beautiful you are. Now, how does this relate to art? Very simple. Art is a way that we can see beauty. It's a way that we can see beauty because particularly in the case of that Van Gogh painting, which you can see right here, the sunflowers, you can see how the sunflowers look and you can see that that corresponds to how sunflowers look in real life, that these are proper sunflowers. These are proportionate sunflowers. And this painting, although simple and seemingly even mundane and seemingly even unimpressive, reflects a deeper story about how the, the structure of things, about how things exist in reality. 
Beauty is not just important because it allows us to understand what is proper. Beauty, my friends, is important is because it reflects order. The fact that some flowers look a certain way, the fact that cars work a certain way, the fact that the human face looks a certain way, the fact that all of these things have general appearances which conform to the broader structure of these things, all of these things say something. It says that reality is orderly, that this world is ordered by principles or laws or things that are reflected through what we see reflected through our senses. Beauty allows us to see that. Art allows us to see that. Contemplation, rationality allows us to see the order of the universe. But the problem is this, my friends. These climate activists, at least the ones who are gluing themselves to paintings, as would happen in the UK and in Venice and the Vatican, and the ones who are throwing tomato soup on Van Gogh's painting, and the ones who are defacing the Monet painting, all of these activists are saying quite loudly that they do not care about the deeper significance of what these paintings reflect. They care about their obscene political activism, and they will sacrifice these underlying principles to further their obscene political activism and in this sense they are unable or at least unwilling to reflect on the importance of beauty as a gateway to understanding order and order being the necessary ingredient of existence where order does not exist chaos reigns and when chaos reigns you cannot have a society you cannot have a coherent human existence my friends these very concepts are under assault. And the only way we can properly respond to these obscenities is by recognizing the significance that these objects, these paintings, these sculptures hold. They're not just aesthetically pleasing things. They're not just nice to look at. These are things that tell us a story, not only about ourselves, but about the world we live in. And if we were to take that seriously and treat them with reverence, or at least treat the principles underlying them with reverence, we might appreciate reality a little bit more. This is the conversation we need to have. When you understand how things properly operate, you understand order. When you understand order, and you understand that order is how things must be, not just how they should be, but how things must be, you'll respect that. But like these leftist activists, when you disregard order, when you don't have a sense of proper versus improper, and therefore you don't have a sense of beauty versus ugliness, you will always endeavor in ugliness. Your actions will always be ugly in the sense that your actions will always be improper. They will never accord to morality. They will never accord to what you should be doing. These uh, assaults on these paintings, my friends, are assaults on beauty. They are therefore assaults on order and they are therefore assaults on reality. As someone who wants to conserve things, as someone who appreciates things for how they are, and just as someone who lives in reality, it is your obligation not to allow these assaults, assaults to go unchallenged. It is your obligation to understand the significance of these things, respect that, and fight for them in your own way. How you do so is up to you, but unwillingness to do so will lead to the destruction of civilization. And on my watch, if I have anything to say about it, that will not happen. These assaults are assaults on beauty. Appreciate beauty, my friends. Appreciate these things not because they're sacred, but because they're necessary. Appreciate these things not because they're nice to look at, but because they are the ingredients by which we exist in this world. Appreciate these things because they can teach us something that you may not even have ever learned if you didn't look at them. Appreciate these things for what they are. When you appreciate them for what they are, and we have a society that appreciates them for what, what they are. Perhaps we'll have a society that understands itself. Here's to hoping. My friends, I love you guys so much. If you want to support me and my message, please be sure to 
like this video, comment on this video, share this video, subscribe to this video. Please be sure to go ahead and buy my merch. I have got merch up now. I've got merch. Um, you can support me on Patreon, Locals, buy me a coffee. All of that information will be in the description down below and the comment section down below. You can join my Discord as well if you want to chat with me or email me. I love your emails. My friends, I love you guys so much. And if you love me, or if you love yourself really, I want you to do one thing for me. Stay pensive. Bye, guys.